Always check every aisle of your thrift store because you never know what you're going to find. Here, in the mug section, I've spotted a piece that doesn't belong, but it happens to be something that I collect. Hello everyone, it's Tiffany with Thrifting Vegas. I shop at thrift stores, estate sales, garage sales and discount stores for items I can resell for profit on online platforms like eBay, Poshmark and OfferUp. I just dropped some packages off at the post office and we are almost at my favorite Goodwill at Rainbow and Cheyenne. Last time, if you watch my last video, you will know that somehow I managed to leave one of my boxes uh, at the checkout. Um, so I am going to have a word with Mario, the manager. He is absolutely lovely, just the best, to see if by any chance it got popped in the back or under the counter somewhere and we can retrieve it. Quite a few things in there that some of you wanted. Um, the hair in the woods picture and the lamb chop puppet and the fuzzy pumpkin. It's such a shame. I have to remember to be better about checking, but we are almost there. I'll see you in a minute. If you watched my last video, you'll know that I did something really silly and left behind a fantastic Beatles A Hard Day's Night poster from the 1960s. Just didn't see it. I'm not tall enough. <laughs> But in the future, if I see piles on high shelves, I need to make a point of lifting them up just to see, or um, as what happened with my editing, lifting my camera up high uh, just to have a look with the help of uh, my lens, also a good idea. But the first thing we're gonna do when we go in is pop over to where that was and see if by any chance it's still there. With my video coming out yesterday, probably not very likely, but it's always worth a look. Let's go thrifting! Just a reminder, if you're in Vegas or visiting Vegas and you're available this coming Saturday, April 29th, Laura Caldwell and I will be at the Charleston Antique Mall here in Vegas for a meet and greet from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. So if by any chance you are available for that, we would love to see you there. Let's go thrifting! Let's grab a cart. Only a few available today. It's quite busy in here. These two are stuck. Let's, here we go. This one is perfect. The color of the day is blue. All items with blue tags are 50% off. A question I am asked very frequently is what is a project piece? A project or hobbyist piece is something that a crafty person has created in their home. Whether it's something completely from scratch or an unfinished mold piece that they have purchased and painted and glazed themselves, it is always very unique. I tend to find a lot of these at thrift stores and then the question becomes which of them do I pick up and why? I have just spotted a piece over here that looks like a salt glaze picture. Let's have a look. $3. It is a teleflora piece made to look like salt glaze. We will leave that there. If a piece is nicely done and uh, most often vintage or old, I will definitely pick it up. If it's not ever so nice, I'll tend to leave it on the shelf, but definitely a case by case basis. We are here in the baskets and frames having a look for the Beatles piece. Unfortunately, the top shelves are bare. Across from the wood and frames is the first aisle of the collectibles and figurines. And up top here is a really fun frog. I've not seen this guy before, but he is party light. I can see the sticker down there. Unfortunately, his crown, one of his crown points and toe uh, is broken, but I'm going to pop him in the cart because I'm very curious to see what he's worth and if I should be looking out for him in the future. Let's keep going here on the shelf. 
Look at this horse trinket box. He's absolutely fabulous. He's got veins popping out. He's in motion. Just love that. $4 as well as this cat for a dollar. Siamese little doorstop fellow. We'll take both of these. Pop them in the cart. We're having a really good start today. This is a little uh, wax burner. I love this bunny in the tulip here. Colors are fantastic blue, little purple uh, sweater he has on. He's not marked, but only $3. So we'll take him as well. There we go. That is the type of thing that there might be additional pieces in different colors. So we'll definitely keep an eye out. I want to have a look at these pineapples. They look nice, but unfortunately, as I pick them up, they're not ever so well made, very thin. So I'm going to leave them. These are some coasters. The cork is very worse for wear, a bit moldy. We'll leave those as well. I have several subscribers that collect um, ocean items, starfish and shells and uh, similarly themed pieces. So we're going to take those. Here are some little marbles. I have a thing for marbles. Oops, the net is broken and they're spilling out. I've always loved marbles ever since I was little. I have some uh, old jars full of my favorites. So I'm going to take those and they do sell well. Some of the old ones actually glow under a black light. They have uranium content. So it's always fun when you find an old jar of marbles at a thrift store, maybe at a garage sale or an estate sale, shine your black light on it. You never know, there might be one or two that light up. This looks like a Disney doll. I'm not really um, up on Disney or dolls, not really my niche, but I'm going to pop this girl in the cart and just uh, educate myself again a little bit to see if she's worth anything. Let's see. Plaques, more dolls down here. Vase filler. Lots and lots of interesting bits. There's a carrot salt. I wonder what goes with him. This is a lovely starfish sea star bowl, but uh, sadly quite broken. Some of the arms are missing, so we'll leave that. Very interesting vintage box here. Only a dollar. Royal George, Colorado. We can tell this is old by the hinges. They're lovely. Just nice quality uh, hinges with a lovely patina. This would really come up nicely with some mineral oil or uh, lemon oil rubbed into it. So another question I get, when to use lemon oil, when to use mineral oil? Lemon oil should be used on furniture pieces. Fur Furniture that is not going to be used for food purposes and food safe mineral oil for anything that's going to come in contact with food. Look at this lovely uh, platter. It's blue, a diamond point. I'm not ever so sure who makes this one, but we will pop it in the cart and have a look. I have a feeling it's not ever so uh, profitable, maybe a 15 to $20 item. It is $5 here at Goodwill, but uh, always worth having a look online, whether it's uh, Google Lens or eBay. The sweet little vintage Avon mouse figurine is still here, still broken. That's such a shame. If you're enjoying the video, it would mean the world to me if you could give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment below and subscribe to my channel with the little red button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. 
A couple of my subscribers suggested that these lovely ginger graters can also be used to clean makeup brushes and paint brushes. I thought that was a really good idea and I was also corrected in that this is a cord apple baker not a ring holder. Sadly it is very crazed so I am again going to leave it. Little duck back here. Oh look at these. These are wooden tropical fish coasters in a holder. They are a bit banged up on the edges, but nothing that couldn't be easily touched up with a little bit of paint. Two sets, eight in total. I love the waves on the front of the holder. They're $3 per set. So let's definitely pop those in the cart. I really, really like them. So fun. I also like this chicken and the, is it a Trojan horse decanter? Sadly, these aren't worth ever so much and this one's missing its lid. And this poor chicken uh, has a chipped tail feather. Some collector plates down here. A little wooden souvenir piece from Haiti. I love these ashtrays. They're vintage bubble ashtrays. It's only 99 cents and I have a couple in different sizes. So with any luck, that will be a different size and I'll have a set of three. Little metal bell here, decorative items. Let's see what's on the bottom. Some platters, frames. The store is quite busy today, so I'm having to breathe in a bit, squish against the shelves to allow people to get past and wait my turn. This is a lovely vintage clear glass dish. Very interesting. And uh, just because I've never seen one quite like that before, I am going to pick it up. Wizard of Oz plates, some more ashtrays. Sadly, collector plates just don't sell for me. I love pumpkins, but this one is an example of a project piece that I am going to leave. It really could have done with another couple of coats of paint. Here's a home co-angel, sadly missing her dongle. So we will have to leave her on the shelf. Some florals, a little cactus light is still there. Here are those cheese markers. We keep seeing they are migrating from section to section here at Goodwill. So I think it's time to rescue them. Let's pop them into our cart. Back here is a vintage plate. I think this is a Homer Laughlin piece. Vogue dinnerware. It's $3, just a single piece. So we will leave that on the shelf. There is some lusterware here, part of a little tea set. Looks like the creamer and the cups and saucers are missing. They're made in Japan. So we are going to leave that as well. Here are some little ethnic pieces. I like the elephant with the rider, but sadly, uh, their foot is missing on the back there. Up high, let's check here. Here are a couple of large Yankee Candle Poinsettia Hurricanes. Sadly, the ones I currently have have not yet sold, so I am going to leave those on the shelf. Mum's Kitchen, open 24 hours sign. It's just a contemporary tin sign. This is lovely. This is a Williams, Colonial Williamsburg doll, original tag. Her name is Sarah. I am going to pop her in the cart and look her up on eBay. A lot because she's in great condition. She is a US historical figure with her original tag. Let's see, here is a pink glass bell. Uh, bells are another thing that don't do very well for me. Usually between $12 and $18, uh, 
Uh, oh, I see another set of the fish here. These are in much better condition, not as many scratches. So now we have three sets of those. We'll put them in the cart along with the bell, which I am going to look up. I have a feeling it's Indiana glass. This is a lovely little frame. This would be great for my whatnot sales. My husband recently accepted an amazing new position as a flight medic. Uh, so <laughs> whatnot is on hold for a little minute. Here is a gorgeous little smile trinket dish. I do like that. We'll take that with us. A little vase. I've noticed uh, another one up here. So let's put it with its friends. That's better. Grab our smile dish here and a frame. Find a spot in the cart, which is filling up rather rapidly. But we will keep going. This, I think, is Party Light. $6. Again, I have a couple of these in inventory. They're not moving. They are nice because you can uh, put a candle in one side or the other, depending on the size you have. Another great little whatnot piece, a little cat for 69 cents. Can't go wrong with that. Another great thing to remember is when shopping for resale, you make your profit in the buy. If you're buying at the right price, uh, you're not going to lose money. Here is a nativity set that somebody painted. They didn't get as far as the shading and detail, so I'm going to leave it. A poppy trinket tray there, contemporary piece, not great quality. I am really trying to uh, reignite interest in vintage clear glass. It's so lovely, so versatile. It's my mission to bring that back into popularity. Got some apples here, ceramic book and boot. What else can we find? Teddies. This poor owl is missing an eye. As we make our way into the seasonal section, many of you have commented on the sorry state of my fingernails just lately, especially my thumb. And there is a reason. My German shepherd bear and I were going for a ball at the same time. His tooth collided with my thumbnail and killed the whole nail. It is glued on currently and badly painted. So please excuse uh, the injury there. Here is a lovely little reindeer. This would be super in a nursery or children's room. Whoop! <laughs> Hearts are throwing themselves at me off the shelf. <laughs> there we go. Lots of four items. Scarecrows and pumpkins. Looking for really high quality, nice pieces. Uh, those will be what I pick up during the year. Little Teddy's there, Santa candle holder, got all sorts of bits down here. It's a nice little heart dish, almost looks like um, Whoville the Grinch. Turkeys, this turkey is still here. I love it, but the material is fraying and separating under his beak. So again, going to leave that. We are in the baskets and wood, plaques and signs. These are fun little bookends. It's a rocket ship. $4 on that. Toys are not really my niche, so I am going to leave that one for somebody else. As with this Dr. Seuss uh, material basket, that would also be fun in a children's room. This is interesting, a banner kit, a bead banner with an angel on it. it. looks very vintage to me. Looks unopened, quite fun, $6, we'll, we'll take that. Some signs. Let's put this mug up here so it doesn't get broken. Coffee shop, open 24 hours. All these are quite contemporary. 
frames. Plaques and holders. There is a classic Pooh book. I loved Winnie the Pooh when I was little. Tigger was my favorite with his bouncy, bouncy spring. More signs and plaques. What's this? It's a little car plant holder. It's woven. That's really sweet for $2. Put a plant in there. What else can we find? Looks like a TV tray. More baskets here. These have cherries on them. Let's have a look at the quality on these. Not ever so good, falling apart just a bit. They look like big lots items. So we will leave them. When all else fails, hug the dog. That's the first thing I do. <laughs> first, hug the dog. Coasters, these are quite nice. Unfortunately, quite split at the corners. So we'll leave those. Always take a minute to check over the things you're looking at for damage. Some things can be repaired or looked past if something is vintage and uh, quite valuable. A little damage can be overlooked by somebody who wants to add it to their collection for a lesser cost. Um, but in general, things that are ready, readily accessible with damage might be left on the shelf. This is a vintage rolling pin. These sell ever so well for me. I'm gonna pop these in my booth because I have sold the ones I had there. Let's see, what else can we find? I'm being extra careful to look up high today after missing that Beatles poster last time. Wine racks, florals, a wooden bowl, more baskets, fresh milk sign. Here's a little moose head. Unfortunately, the pine cones are a bit worse for wear, but somebody could definitely take a minute and replace those and make it good as new. Scotty dog, lots of modern canvases. Those are quite fun. Somebody did quite a nice project and even made their own frames on those. Let's see, this is a made in China Winnie the Pooh frame. It's a bit damaged, so we'll leave that. And unfortunately, Winnie the Pooh items just don't sell as well as they used to. I think the market has got a bit flooded with those um, folks trying to sell off collections. There are some pieces that go quite high, but uh, in general, the lesser quality ones just don't sell too well. Shelves are waiting for new treasures to come out here. Oh look, there's a doll bed with some dolls on it, princesses similar to the one I popped in my cart. So I'm gonna take a minute and look up the girl that's in my cart and then I will put her back with her friends if she is not uh, profitable enough to take with me. Well, I looked her up. I concluded she is Merida from Disney Pixar's The Brave, um, probably about a 10 to $12 piece. So I am going to leave her with her princess friends on the bed and hopefully a little girl will come by and be thrilled with those. Here are some letters. These are fun. I think this says family, but it's missing an M. What's this piece? Oh, that's interesting. Misty treetops up there. A 
This is a wrought iron scroll. Not exactly sure what you'd do with that. Perhaps put it over a simply framed or non-framed piece of art. It's $5. I think I'm going to leave it though. Down here is a wooden tray. Quite modern. We'll leave that as well. Here we are in the vases, planters and florals as usual. The clear glass is first. This is a bulb forcer. You put a tulip hyacinth bulb in there and you can actually watch it sprout roots, then shoots and even flower. Really fun uh, as a science project if you have children. I love those. Not ever such a lot in the clear glass. That's exciting. I wonder... Uh, if that means my trend is catching on by the clear glass, it's lovely. Down here we have a frog. Look at him. I'm not exactly sure he's a planter. Burton and Burton. Not sure. He's lovely though. Let's think about him. This is just an inexpensive little pot. I'm wondering if the frog is supposed to have a lid. Don't know. There's our salt glaze teleflora jug. Probably about a 10 to $12 piece, that one. Colored glass. This is interesting. It is pottery. $5. Not super duper exciting though. Uh, quite scratched and chipped and damaged. When you see blue windmills on a piece, always take a look at it because it could be Delft blue. Let's have a look at this crocus pot. The little bulbs come out through the holes. You could use it as a strawberry planter too. It is Delft blue. That's going to say hand painted, made in Holland. It's $3. Lovely, lovely piece. Let's pop that in the cart. Let's keep going. We'll check up top. More arrangements here. Basket. A couple of you asked me what I meant last time by a cut off glass top. And let me show you with this black one. See how it's just sliced, not rounded edges, very, very sharp, uh, not good quality. I do like this pottery cup here. Oh, but unfortunately, look, it's got a big chip. That is a shame. We will leave it. More planters. Here is a clear florist vase. It's got quite a crude glass sunflower in it. Only $2, but that's just not ever such good quality. So I'm going to leave it on the shelf. I have to say I'm a bit torn, but uh, I think that would be just more trouble than it's worth to keep it in one piece. <laughs> Lots of silks and wreaths. It's a window box. This plate looks like Gibson. Let's double check. Transferware. Would be nice with a plant on it, I suppose. Moving into the metals. Oh, this looks like a nice quality basket. Silver plated. This is one of the nicer ones. It's $5. Uh, but it's quite heavy. The metal is quite nice and thick. So I think we will pop this in the cart and use it uh, to demonstrate how silver plate can be cleaned up and brought back to shiny. It always takes a bit more concentration to navigate through the metals because the pieces seem to blend together and you really have to focus to find the good stuff here. It's a metal tray, lots of racks and frames and organizers. Oh, look at this. This looks like slag glass. It's a little creamer. 
interesting blue color. I'm not sure that it's that old, but it's really fun and it's only 69 cents. So we will grab that. I wonder if there are any other pieces to go with it. We'll definitely check out the kitcheny bits to see. Spice rack. Is that uh, a little toothbrush holder for and a uh, hole for a cup? More baskets and racks, sconces, candle holders, wall decor. It is incredible the variety of items available here. Decor pieces, some little copper mugs. Black wire here. Oh, look at these little owl trivets. Those are fun. $3. These, again, a great item for whatnot sales. At $1.50 a piece, not too much invested in them. So if they sell for three, four, five dollars, I still make a profit. How fun is this? Do you remember I found the welcome sign with the peaches? This is very similar, but it's a cow. Just lovely. I know several of you collect um, cow items. This is a dairy cow. Five dollars on that. We will definitely put that in the cart. And these, what are these? These look like little wall vases with uh, test tube style inserts. Not ever such good quality. Let me think about these. They're two ninety nine a piece. Three different sizes. They might make an interesting little group on the wall. Uh, I'll think about those. $10 for the three. Hmm. More seasonal items in this aisle. Some pumpkins. Let's see. Valentine's bits, fall bits. Wreaths. There's a Christmas Santa platter, not Fitz and Floyd. Look what I see. This is an Italian plate. Look at the rooster on there. I absolutely love the colors and the edge on that. Absolutely gorgeous piece. No damage. It is signed. Hand painted. Italy. Only $3. I love it. Christmas plate, Libby, some mugs here. I'm looking extra carefully after finding that Italian plate just in case there are more of the same. Lots of glasses up top, St. Patrick's Day wreath. These, several of you have asked me to look at these. They are not vintage Tupperware. They're sharper image pieces, very modern. Uh, a lot of copies of those vintage lidded pieces around. There are some ducks back here. And I think I saw the rest of the set over on the other aisle. See, and there's a Harry Potter book up there. Let's also take a look at that. These are greeting cards. We grab these and we will look at that book. Both of my children love Harry Potter, so I'm going to pick this up anyway for $5. But uh, during the haul, I will show you how to check whether or not a book is a first edition. First editions can sometimes be quite valuable. 
I am still holding these ducks in my hand because I'm afraid if I put them down uh, either on the shelf or on the cart, I'm going to forget them. So let's see. Oh, look at this. Blue heart dish. Possibly vintage. This blue is a really popular color. Sells ever so well for me. Little trinket. Actually quite a large trinket. You could even use it as a nut or candy dish. So we will pop that there. Grab our ducks. And keep going. I think I saw the rest of these ducks just on the other side of this aisle. So we'll finish up here and then go put them with their friends. Christmas aisle is just a bit sparse. Not ever so much to see. Here is a picture. This looks like a project piece. As you can tell, the mushrooms aren't too terribly well painted. There's no mark on the bottom. You see there, the detail just isn't there. So I'm going to leave that. Let's go round the other side. I knew I had seen them over here. Here they are, two more little ducks. There are actually two different kinds, three of one sort and two of the other. The three look to be a little bit older, more vintage. They are 99 cents a piece. See, these three go together and then the two at the front. Now that I've made all this effort to find them and put them together, I'm thinking that I should just grab them all. Let's do that. As I was walking across to find the other ducks, I noticed this bag through the shelf. Really nice quality Christmas ornaments, all in individual bags. They look like they came from a craft fair. So let's pick these up as well. Always check every aisle of your thrift store because you never know what you're going to find. Here, in the mug section, I've spotted a piece that doesn't belong, but it happens to be something that I collect. This is Raku Pottery. Its unique look is created by being fired in a fuel-burning kiln at a relatively low temperature, then cooled rapidly using natural materials such as grass, sawdust or clay. I absolutely love Raku and I have a little collection which I am going to show you at the end of this video. Let's keep going. These look like English pieces. They don't sell too terribly well though, so I'm going to leave them. This looks like Roseville. There is a crack on the handle, but it doesn't go all the way through, so it might just be a manufacturer's flaw. Somebody else has peeled the label to take a look at it. There is the mark, Roseville. It's just a couple of dollars. It would be absolutely gorgeous with some flowers in it, and I don't mind that flaw at all. This piece looks similar, but ooh, as I pick it up, I can tell it's very lightweight, made in China, not good quality. Here is the eagle mug with the crack that mum and I found on our last trip. So sad. Here's a little hallmark piece, sweet little animals. It's only a dollar. Sadly, I think this is only about an eight to ten dollar mug, but I am going to look it up just to see. Here we are in the kitcheny bits. I have one of these glass salad dressing shakers and I use it all the time. It does a great job at mixing oil and vinegar. This is a lovely, heavy water pitcher with an ice slip. And these look like they match the little blue creamer we found. They're very interesting. They have the appearance of slag glass. I'm not sure what they're for. Are they little shot glasses? Are they cups? They're a dollar a set and they do appear to match perfectly. If anybody knows what these are for, please do leave me a comment. I would be so grateful if you know. A lovely pair of, are these Indiana glass? Uh, vintage pink cups and saucers here. They have a 
petal motif on the saucer. They're in lovely condition, $3 a piece. So let's grab those. Carefully pop them into our cart. There we go. What else can we find? Platters, serving bowls and dishes. All sorts of things from different decades, vintage to modern, different styles that is made to look old, very lightweight. There's a decanter. Over here, we have two amazing sets of Americana salt and pepper shakers. This one appears to have a small repair. It's done very well, and I just can't bear the thought of these going into a landfill. So at $4 a set, I am going to pick both of them up. They sell very, very well for me. Let's see, this one, these have their original stoppers as well. So let's carefully get these into our cart. We will keep going on the shelf. Here are some popcorn sprinkle and shake shakers. Those go for about $10, 10 to 12. Here's sea biscuit, but his head is terribly chipped, unfortunately. Serving dishes, very lightweight, those. What else? Some vases down here. Some replicas of vintage canisters. This is an interesting shaped bowl, be a nice console bowl. It is a contemporary piece, $10 on that. No fun to ship. <laughs> A couple of nesting bowls here. I think we're missing a third one. These are quite lightweight and made of uh, material that chips very easily. This is an Anchor Hocking Fire King serving dish with a silver plated uh, surround there, a server. Nesting bowls, Anchor Hocking again, blue. What else is there? Look at these little frogs. Hey, did these match that froggy planter we saw over in the floral section? I wonder. These are absolutely lovely. $4 again. Let's grab these. On the other side of this aisle, hiding in the miscellaneous toiletries, is this absolutely gorgeous Hazel Atlas Amethyst Glass Dish. It's an oval dish. It could be a soap dish or nuts or candy. Absolutely lovely. We'll take it. In the plates and bowls aisle is this gorgeous Fitz and Floyd hydrangea tray. It has an indent in the middle, possibly for a dip bowl. There's the FF sticker, Fitz and Floyd. It's $6. Absolutely gorgeous. Here's a little Asian teacup. It's very thin, lightweight. The painting isn't especially good outside the lines and it's not marked. I don't know anything about this. The saucer is nowhere in sight, so we will leave it. Let's pop this tray carefully underneath our cart. And we will have a look down the aisle to see if we can spot the matching bowl or any other pieces that match that Fitz and Floyd hydrangea flower pattern. 
we are doing our second go round of the store to make sure we didn't miss anything. This is the last section of the kitcheny bits aisle where they put all the miscellaneous odds and ends, bits and bobs and utensils. Some containers, cookie cutters there. What's this? A gold set of turkey salt and pepper shakers, $3. These do ever so well for me at Thanksgiving. We'll pop those in the cart. And here is another vintage rolling pin. Now we have two, which is absolutely perfect. The end is a little bit damaged, but no matter. It just adds character to something like this. What else is there? Lots of pots and pans. Oh, this is a melamine yum dish by Ray Dunn. These are lovely for outdoor dining, little snacks for the kids. We'll take that. Let's put it up here. That just reminded me, let's pop back over and see if the frog planter is still there. There she is. She's migrated up to the top shelf, but it looks like the salt and pepper match her perfectly. We could use her for popcorn, fruit, snacks, whatever we wanted to. Let's pop those carefully inside and we will find a spot for her in the cart. I just noticed that my little planter has some damage. It's missing a headlight and the wicker on the back is broken. So I am going to pop this back on the shelf. They must be restocking because I can't imagine missing these the first time round. Fitz and Floyd, Dove and Rose, taper candle holders, absolutely gorgeous, only $4 a piece. These are amazing too. William Sonoma candy cane swizzle sticks, perfect for Christmas whatnot sales. I am taking a stroll through the miscellaneous tools and someone has popped these two pictures here. This is an amazing portrait of a historical lady. It has vintage paper on the back, beautiful miniature. And this is very interesting. My creed will take a minute during my haul and I will read this to you. It's so insightful, really, really interesting. Both pieces are only 69 cents. So let's get these into our cart. Having found that artwork, we are taking our stroll through the littles here to see if there is anything else similar. Sometimes those miniatures come in sets. You find two or three together. I'm not seeing anything similar here. So let's wander over to the large art section everything is stacked a little precariously. This looks like somebody's mountain vacation on wood. It's such a shame that some of these pieces end up at Goodwill. This big, big piece is so personalized. It's a shame. Lots and lots of frames here. Some color by numbers, paint by numbers. This is a print. The Pears soap piece is interesting. Old advertising. It's quite a popular brand in England still, I think. Pears soap, it was a sort of translucent amber color smelled really nice. Not seeing anything today. Let's have a peek behind here just to make sure all these frames look very, very modern.
there's a lonely M sitting here on the shelf in the sports section. Can you remember what this might go to? Did you get it? It's going to complete this word to spell family. Let's put these in the right order and get them fixed up so somebody can come along and buy it. If you would like to purchase an item you see in my haul, please email me at thriftingvegas.tiffany at gmail.com. Please include your name, your address, the item, and the price I mention. If it's available, I will send you an emailed invoice. Here on my table is everything I found at Goodwill. Another really large haul. I spent $95.15. Let's start over here with these incredible fish coasters. I found three sets of four. Each has an individual wooden holder. I paid $3 per set and I am going to ask $22 for each set. Next we have this lovely vintage Royal Gorge Colorado little box. It's very unique. It's a half circle. The hinges are fantastic. Probably my favorite part. Really vintage. It has three little feet which when you lift the lid you can actually see that they are pegged in there. Obviously an old piece. It could use a little bit of oil to brighten it up but the original lettering is still there on top. I paid 99 cents for it and I shall ask $18. Back here is our Italian silver plated bread basket. Very nice quality, much heavier than the made in China ones. It says silver plated on the bottom and Italy. Looks like someone has over tightened these screws a little bit and the plastic is cracked. But I am excited to show you how nicely it cleans up with some silver polish. Next we have these lovely sea stars. There are two of them in the bag. I paid $4 for the pair. They are real sea stars here and I shall ask $15 a piece for those. Next we have this vintage beaded banner kit. It's an angel. It says joy under it. The package looks vintage. Oh it says right here the date is 2001 Green Plastics Corporation. There's uh, instructions and materials on the back. Looks like a fun project for Christmas. I paid $6 for it and I am going to ask $25. Here we have our lovely Delft Blue um, little crocus planter. When I got it home, unfortunately, I notice that it does have some hairline cracks in it. This is quite common for these tulip planters because what happens is the tulip plants force their way through these holes as they grow and uh, sometimes the ceramic or porcelain isn't strong enough to hold them. Nevertheless, a lovely piece for display. It's got a gorgeous windmill and uh, water scene on there and as you saw in the video it is signed on the bottom. I paid three dollars for it and in its condition I am going to ask twenty dollars. This is my lovely piece of Raku pottery. Just gorgeous. Look at the colors on this. It has the crazing um, as a result of the 
rapid cooling process to make the pottery. This is a piece that I am going to add to my collection and I'm going to show you my small collection uh, after the haul in this video. So do stay tuned for that. I'm not exactly sure uh, what she charged me for this, uh, but it didn't have a price. Next, we have a lovely Italian plate here. It has a rooster on it. It's in perfect condition. Gorgeous greens with red, blue, and yellow here. It is signed on the back. Hand painted Italy, $3. Oh, it's really manky there, needs a wash. Uh, $3, I am going to ask $25 on that. Next, we have a lovely horse trinket box or cash pot here. It has a sticker, casting Castings by Lisa, Palmer, Alaska. It does have a teeny tiny chip on the ear here that um, I'm confident that I can touch that up nicely. It is a gorgeous piece. I hope you can see the lovely relief on there the motion of the horse i paid four dollars for it i'm going to ask 28 dollars next we have our lovely roseville creamer here it does have what i believe to be a manufacturer's floor on the top of the handle as you can see let me zoom in there is a sort of a crack and a bubble here, but it doesn't go through to the underneath or the other side. It is a lovely piece. It would be gorgeous with some flowers in it or just uh, as a display. I paid $2 for it and I am going to ask $20. I did a little bit of research and I found out that these pieces are not actually slag glass, uh, although sometimes called slag glass. They're called acro agate. This is a child's little tea set, creamer and some little cups. And interestingly enough, these cups do glow a little bit under a black light. Um, I will show you a little video in my um, light box in the dark to show you how they glow. Really fun. I paid, let's see, $2.69 for the set. And I am going to ask $28 uh, for the set here. Next, we have these lovely Gans cheese markers. You can take a dry erase marker and write on these uh, what cheese you have and pop them uh, in your cheese board display. I did take them out of the box and give them a wash. They would had some yucky bits on and uh, the last person's cheese markings. This one did have a little bit of a chippy there which I fixed with a pen and I am going to glaze over that. But these had been at the Goodwill for at least a month. Um, I paid $3 for them and I shall ask $15. Under here we have our Ray Dunn Melamine Yum Bowl. These are nice quality heavy duty melamine. I paid $2 for this one. And I am going to ask $18. I love this little trinket dish. It's glass. It uh, says smile here. A smile is something nice to see. It doesn't cost a cent. A smile is something all your own. It never can be lent. A smile is welcome anywhere. It does away with frowns. A smile is good for everyone to ease the ups and downs. It's in super condition. I paid 99 cents for it and I'm going to ask $12. So I ended up picking up these little duck napkin holders and I'm really glad I did because these three at the front have hand painted little blue flowers on them. Can you see those? 
The five aren't a complete set. There's these three and then there's these two at the back. But I think it's really fun if you have a family uh, with a mum and dad and three little ones, uh, they would be absolutely perfect. I paid 99 cents a piece for these, so $5. And uh, I am going to ask $25 for the set. Next we have our sweet little owl trivets here. There's two of them. You could use them side by side for hot pans or as a display. I paid $3 a piece for them and I am going to ask $12 a piece. Next we have our dairy cow welcome sign here. Our lovely cow is ever so friendly. She's got a bell around her neck. And my favorite part is this vintage chain. It's hanging from wrought iron. I paid $5 on this one and I am going to ask $20. Back here we have our little cat. Cats do ever so well for me, which is the reason I picked this girl up. She says calico kittens on the bottom. She was 69 cents and I am going to ask $12. These two sets of Americana salt and pepper shakers were a great find. Sadly, as I mentioned, this fellow has a, a cracked and repaired hat but it's a really well done repair um, not noticeable if you are just using these for display which I do recommend because they're fantastic pieces uh, made in Japan and these ones are a little more modern I believe these are from the early 2000s actually 1998 I was close these ones are made in China I am going to ask 18 on this set and 35 on the older set here. Next we have our little pink cups and saucers with the petal uh, edging. I believe these are Jeanette glass, not Indiana. I paid $3 a piece on these and I am going to ask $28 for the pair. Underneath my little bag of marbles here is our bubble ashtray. These are really fun. They look like uh, you are underwater here, surrounded by bubbles. It reminds me of snorkeling. Really fun. I paid a dollar for this one. I am going to ask $15. Another clear piece of glass here. Very unique shape. Sawtooth edge. Super as a little ring holder, catch-all, or a coin tray. Two ninety-nine on this one. I am really trying to uh, increase the love of clear glass again. There are some beautiful pieces, including this one. I am going to ask eighteen dollars on this one. Next, we have our froggy set. We have a salt and pepper shaker set, two chubby little frogs here, $3.99 on the salt and peppers, and mama frog here, I, they, they and I thought she was a planter in the vase section, but turns out she is a Burton and Burton, and uh, possibly a popcorn holder, or she might have come with a bag of cookies in her, but you could use her for whatever you like. She was $5. I am going to ask $28 on the set. Here we have our gorgeous pair of Fitz and Floyd Dove taper candle holders. Look at the colors on these. Just fantastic. They're absolutely beautiful, perfect for any holiday. I believe I paid $4 a piece on these. And uh, I am going to ask $30 for the pair. Back here we have our turkey salt and peppers. Gold, perfect for Thanksgiving. I paid $3 for these two. And uh, I expect to get uh, $18 
to $20 right around Thanksgiving. Another Fitz and Floyd piece here. This is a really pretty hydrangea themed tray. Blue, pink and white hydrangeas. It does have an indent in the middle. I think um, this is one of a two part chip and dip tray. Uh, unfortunately, the bowl was nowhere to be found, but I'm hoping at some point it might show up or that somebody is missing the tray to their bowl. That would be the best. We can reunite a set. There's the FF sticker on the bottom. Fitz and Floyd, $6 on this. I am going to ask $30. Here we have our bag of lovely, what I believe to be craft fair Christmas ornaments, there's bows and grapes in here. Very fancy, possibly handmade, really nice. I'm sure these will come out at a whatnot sale closer to Christmas. I paid $5 for the bag and I expect to get around at $12 to $15 for each piece, possibly more for this bow mysteriously marked a hundred dollars <laughs> next we have our vintage rolling pins these always do so well for me um, they're great for a vintage display whether your kitchen is themed 20s 30s 40s 50s 60s 70s they are a really nice addition i paid $3 and $4 for these and I generally get $18 to $20 a piece. This is a fantastic vintage amethyst bowl. It is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. It was in the toiletry section. It was only $4. Absolutely love the vintage style of this and uh, I expect to get $25. I picked up this little lavender because I thought it was really sweet and uh, paid $2 for it. I shall ask 12 if uh, it doesn't sell it will go down into my vintage booth to add a pop of color. Over here we have our two pieces of art that we found in the tools section. This is our lovely historical lady in the plastic frame. She is a print. She's in a plastic frame. Um, very old, though. If you take a look at the back, the paper shows us that uh, this is definitely a vintage piece. I paid 69 cents for her. I expect to get $35. This piece is also really, really interesting. It's a framed piece titled My Creed. And I'm going to read it to you because I found it really inspirational and interesting. It says, in some way, however small and secret, each of us is a little mad. Everyone is lonely at, at bottom and cries to be understood, but we can never entirely understand someone else. And each of us remains part stranger, even to those who love us. It is the weak who are cruel. Gentleness is to be expected only from the strong. Those who do not know fear are not really brave, for courage is the capacity to confront what can be imagined. You can understand people better if you look at them, no matter how old or impressive they may be, as if they are children. For most of us never mature, we simply grow taller. Happiness comes only when we push our brains and hearts to the farthest reaches of which we are capable. The purpose of life is to matter, to count, to stand for something, to have, to have it make some difference that we lived at all. This also was 69 cents and someone just put their heart and soul into this. And uh, I, for one, am very impressed. 69 cents and uh, I have a feeling I might keep this for a while just to ponder it a little uh, and uh, internalize those wise words. This is Sarah. 
She is a doll from Colonial Williamsburg. Absolutely lovely. She has her original tag. I paid $4 for her and I am going to ask $25. This is, a, this is a beautiful vintage glass heart. It's an absolutely stunning, almost peacock blue. I paid $3.99 for it. It's in perfect condition and I am going to ask $28. Last but not least, these lovely candy cane swizzle sticks from Williams Sonoma. I paid $5 for these and I expect to get $18 to $20. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my thrifting trip to Goodwill and my haul. Please stay tuned. I'm going to give you a little peek at my Raku collection to which I will be adding this beautiful little piece here. I'm also going to show you, as usual, a little snippet of our puppies, Bear and Rio, the cats, and don't forget, tomorrow I will be at the Charleston Antique Mall here in Las Vegas, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. with my dear friend, Laura Coldwell, who is coming down from Oregon. She has thrifted her way down through LA to Vegas, so I am so excited to see her. Uh, if you see anything you're interested in purchasing, please do send me an email, thriftingvegas.tiffany at gmail.com. Include your name, your address, the item you're interested in, and your offer. And I will see you next time. Bye. As promised, I want to share with you my small Raku collection. This piece is on my bathroom wall. I have had this for a long, long time. I believe I purchased it when I was probably 13 or 14 years old from a little gallery in England. It's by a South African artist and that's all I remember about it. It is signed and marked on the base there. But look at these gorgeous, gorgeous colours. It is a wall jug designed to sit like that on the wall. And the colours are just absolutely stunning. Next, we will go downstairs to my French curio. These are the pieces I have down here in my gorgeous French curio cabinet. I think I'm going to have to give you a peek through the inside. This larger piece I purchased from my friend Yvonne Thrifty Rich and she was lovely enough to actually send me this additional piece because she had seen on my video when I found yet another piece in Huntington Beach where my parents live. We were there on vacation. See how these two match? Absolutely love the colors of these. I believe these are created by spraying alcohol on the hot item as it comes out of the kiln and before the combustible materials are put on it. But just see how fabulously these go together. They're lovely. This is my largest piece of Raku. It's a stunning vase, but uh, unfortunately, if you can see, it has a massive crack running down, not just one, but both sides here, which is terribly sad because the colors on it are gorgeous and it has and this amazing blue, crazed interior 
I don't know if you can see that. However, there is a solution. I have considered repairing this piece with the Asian art of Kintsugi, Japanese, a Japanese method in which hi, the break is repaired using uh, a gold powder in cement and it leaves an absolutely beautiful finish of gold down the damage. So um, once I have plucked up enough courage <laughs> and learned a little bit more about this process, I will perhaps uh, take you with me on a journey where I attempt to repair this stunning piece of Raku. Just a reminder that this Saturday, April 29th, 2023, I will be at the Charleston Antique Mall's Vintage Bazaar for a meet and greet with my friend and fellow YouTuber, Laura Coldwell. The event runs from 8am to 3pm at 560 South Decatur Boulevard, Las Vegas 89107. They'll have shopping, music, entertainment, and food. Please come down and see us. We hope to see you there. What are you three doing? Oh, Ziggy's trying to watch his hummingbirds, isn't he? Hi, Bear. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting too big for that poor old chair. <laughs> What's going on, Ziggy? Got some hummingbirds? Got some hummingbirds? Oh, it's very bright. I think we'll have to go outside and look. We have to go outside and look? Leo? That sun is coming through the window. Ooh. Dust. <laughs> is he a good pillow? Yeah. Bear. He's a good bear, is he?
now that it's summer the cats have been spending an awful lot of time in my office off the master bedroom in their cat tree here's bandit little feet dangling over the edge he's got his paw <laughs> over his face sorry b am i disturbing you poor b very sleepy and on the top bank is our Ziggy hi Z that's really high up I'm just looking at him through my screen hi Z here he is hi babe hello oh I'm sorry did I wake you hello poor Ziggy very sleepy. Oh goodness. Hello. Hello. Okay, I'm sorry. You go back to sleep, my love. 